Hello, everybody, and welcome to Danica Marie and our dope discussions. <laughs> Baby, it's looking like a lot of men have changed the game. It's looking like a lot of men have said enough is enough. I'm not coming to rescue you. I'm not coming to play clean up. It's looking like women need to, I don't know, choose better. Whoopsie. See, before I share my screen and we get deep into this dope discussion, all right, um, we have to go ahead and acknowledge this. All right, and y'all like the video, share the video and subscribe. Unfortunately, in today's climate, a lot of women have a type. We go after the men that we know are no good. We go after the men that we know would not make great fathers, would not make great husbands, life partners, lovers, leaders, teachers, no. Instead, we will try to make them be everything that we know that they should already be and possess. And that's just not your rightful place or role as a woman to do that. Again, the type of male, not man, that we like, all right? And not all of us, but it's too many, right? The type of male that we like as a lot of women of today are projects, men that we have to build, men that we have to lead and teach, right? Because on some level, a lot of women want to be able to control the man that they are with. So we don't go after the men that we know are already men, right? He's already self-sufficient. He already um, has a good idea of his life path. He's already ambitious. He's already a leader, a thinker. He's already somebody that is productive. We don't want to go after him because again, there's no thrill or excitement in changing him, right? I don't get to have my ego stroked by being able to say that I made him become the man that he is today. But that project, that project of a man, oh yeah, I get to have bragging rights over him once I make him into the proper husband. And to, I get to have bragging rights over him when I get to make him into a, a stand-up father. Peep the game and follow your little big sister for a second. This is what we do as women of today. Our type is project. How can I mold him and create him into what I want him to be? If he's already established and already made, ugh, he's probably already stuck in his ways. He already has a good idea of what he's looking for. He's probably not going to be able to bend to my will and get on with my program because he already has his own set into motion. So yeah, I'll go over here with this type, AKA the project man, the builder bear, right? Y'all like the video, it's some real talk. I may ruffle some feathers, but it is what it is. We gotta be real, right? And then, when our project build a bare man fails, now we want to complain. You had a choice to go and get and build with a already established man. A man that could have helped you. A man that would not mind picking up his end of the bargain. But we don't do that, do we? Too many of us want to have the excitement and the thrill of turning a project male into a man. And then 
having it in the back of our minds that I'll always have a real quality man that I know I should have been with in the first place to fall back on if all thus fails. But men ain't doing that no more, baby. We used to bank on that. Oh, yeah, well, it's more exciting with the project male turning him into a man and then ultimately being able to mold him into what I want him to be and have bragging rights over him because, again, I was the one who changed him. Um, so I'll go and get with him. And then if it doesn't work out, I mean, I'll always have this man over here to step up to the plate and be, you know, the husband I always wanted my project to be, to be the father that I always want my project to be. And then I'll live happily ever after. But again, no, no, baby, not happening anymore. Men are not taking on the load of sacrificing, investing into projects because that's the catch to it all. We ultimately become the very projects that we try to embark on, right? Isn't that a catch? So yeah, men are like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sacrifice myself trying to clean up a mess I did not make. No, I'm not going to invest so much of myself into a project that is not really going to yield me much of a return. I'd rather not. I'd rather focus on myself or find a woman that did life right that chose better, that did better. And again, I understand we all make mistakes and everything, but let's be real, you all. Again, when it comes to a lot of women of today, we make the conscious choices and decisions to get with males that we know better than to lay down with, procreate with, be with, love, let's be honest. But for some superficial surface level reason, we were like, oh, no, no, no. You know, this will be different. And then it's not. It's so bad out here as far as men being checked out and done with the project single mom, right? <laughs> because, again, that's the irony to it all. Like, you become the project. It's so bad that they are now opting to date each other since the men are no longer coming through sacrificing themselves trying to clean up projects that they did not create this is what we get left with y'all like the video should the video and subscribe let's get into this all right here we have a single mother and she's so desperate that she is looking for other single moms to help her because the men are not. I have been a single mom for all of two years and I have to say, I hate it here. I don't hate being a mom. I don't hate having kids, but I hate the fact that I only had two options, either stay in an unhealthy, dysfunctional relationship or do it all on my own. Now, let's pause there for a second. And again, y'all like the video, share the video and subscribe. Now, she's complaining about these two options that she has, right? But what she's neglecting to acknowledge is once again, you are the one that placed yourself in such a predicament to begin with. You are the one that left yourself with those options. The first option should have been not to procreate with a guy that I'm sure there were plenty of red flags that would, were telling you, hey, maybe he's not somebody that you should, you know, start a family with. Hey, maybe he's not somebody that you should be with long term. Hey, there's always red flags. But for whatever reason, we overlook them thinking that they'll go away and they don't. Now you're stuck between a, a rock and a hard place like, oh, I really hate that. 
You know, the only options I have now is to stay in a dead end relationship to where it's toxic and destructive or do everything on your own. But ma'am, I'm pretty sure you knew. I'm pretty sure there were minty and plenty of red flags, baby. That that man was toxic. And the relationship would not be able to um, be, be maintained and sustained, especially with adding on children. Let's be clear, you all. And yes, I said minty, baby. There's always a minty and plenty of red flags. But we like, oh, no, nah, girl, I think it's just burnt orange. Mm -hmm. No, nah, it wasn't red. It was hot pink. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. And you knew better. And let's go here as well. A lot of us as women today, we feel like giving a man a family or a baby will make him change. Am I getting too real? Am I hitting home too close? Hold on. Oh, I, yeah, it's not really going as planned. And I mean, he seems cool, though. Ooh, maybe if I have a baby, that'll stop him from being crazy. Wrong. So, ma'am, before you were presented with these two options that you are saying that you have, you also had another choice before you even got there which was, again, to peep out those red flags and maybe address them and do something about them or if all the spells leave him alone. Not think that having a child or a family would change it. And so many of y'all do that as well. But let's continue. Take it back just a little bit, y'all. And again, y'all like the video. Functional relationship. Or oh, let's go back kids but i hate the fact that i only had two options either stay in an unhealthy dysfunctional relationship or do it all on my own and see when i was a stay-at-home mom i did the cooking the cleaning i was a primary person in charge of taking care of the children and here i thought that that was a totally different category than being a working mom as a working mom hold on she said she was a stay-at-home mom hold on second back category Hold on, y'all. We got to peep the game real quick. On my own. And see, when I was a stay-at-home mom, I did the cooking, the cleaning. I was a primary person in charge of taking care of the children. And here I thought that that was a totally different category than being a working mom. Now, she's saying that she was once in a position to where she was a stay-at-home mom and pretty much being taken care of for her to be a stay at home mom would indicate that she was with a man that was doing all of the uh, the providing right he was the working one so uh just kind of you know speculating here but it seems as though maybe just maybe she was a stay at home mom and she got overwhelmed with being a stay-at-home mom and maybe she was able to see how her husband was able to go out into the workforce and you know provide and get money and still have i guess his own sense of identity and pride about going out there and establishing himself and maybe and again it's just just me peeping game and speculating maybe she got a little bit jealous of that because like damn like i want to be able to be a career person i want to be a career woman i don't want to be you know just the the stay-at-home wife i don't want to be the one that is just consumed with children all day i need my own identity outside of just being a mom and i and i know a lot of women may go through that to where they feel like they're losing themselves in um raising children and so when they see that their significant other or their man is out there able to, you know, get his own and, you know, still establish his own and, you know, have a lot going on, they could start to question their own existence. Like, what am I doing? And that's the energy that I'm picking up on with her. And again, it's, it's all speculation, you know, I'm, but I am a little bit psychic. Okay. And so hold on. Okay. <laughs> And again, y'all like the video. Y'all know I'm onto something with this. A lot of stay-at-home moms, life becomes 
just consumed with kids, right? And before you know it, they start to say, well, you know, I don't feel seen or I don't feel like myself or I don't feel like I'm doing much of anything with myself. So what I want to do is go out there and build my own career. I want to go out there and be able to have my own money. I don't want to have to depend on no man. When in all actuality, that man is actually doing you a huge favor. But we can become so, again, consumed in our emotions as women. We don't see the grand picture of everything. We'll see him as somebody that is being toxic all because he's telling us, hey, baby, I don't want you to work. I want you to be able to stay at home and just raise the kids, focus on the children, because, you know, kids today, they need that parental guidance that they're not really getting in the school systems. So they'll say, oh, you're toxic because you're trying to hinder my progress. You're toxic because you're not trying to allow me to establish my own self and, you know, be independent on my on my own and not have to rely on you. And it's like, no, baby get out your feelings let's think about everything holistically by me working that is really lightening your load because it's a lot of women out there who not only have to do all of the things that you are doing as a stay-at-home parent but they're also having to do what i do as the man and i don't want to place upon you that amount of stress i want you to be able to tend to the children so they can have a nice environment and upbringing right i go out and i do the hard labor the hard work right and you'll still be able to have your freedom of figuring out what you want to do with your day see i understand and again i'm not a mother yet but i have listened to a lot of um stay-at-home moms and like i said they can really become a lot very overwhelmed and uh have a lot of stress on them when they do start to feel as though they're losing themselves in the children but what i've also heard them say is well at least i do get the luxury of you know planning my own day right I, I still get the luxury of um being able to have some me time outside of having to tend to a boss and all of that so a lot of a lot of the stay-at-home moms while it could be overwhelming for you all right it's a lot better than what else is out there it's a lot of women out there that have to do it all and so I'm pretty sure she got a rude reality check when it was like, damn, um, you mean to tell me now that I want to be a strong, independent boss chick and not have to answer to a man that is toxic because he's trying to control me and rule me and dictate me and all of this? When in all actuality, a lot of the times, and again, I don't know her situation, but just from what I've observed in the past, okay, a lot of the time, those men are not toxic at all. You know, they just understand how things are supposed to be ran and done. They understand roles. And with a lot of women of today wanting to, you know, be bosses and be independent and not have to be under any kind of leadership or anything of that sort, they can get lost in that and start pointing the blame and the finger like, oh, well, you're the reason why I'm not able to live my life. And you're the reason that I'm not able to do X, Y, and Z and one, two, and three. And it's like, no, man, you don't understand that this man is actually doing you a favor. And see, she realized that too late. She going back and forth like, I don't want to be a stay at home mom. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I want to have my own. I want to be my own boss chick real women's right and then after a while it's only so much a man can take so it's like okay go ahead do it you think you know best right because you feel but i know see a lot of men they're very logical in their thinking they're not doing things to try to make you feel inferior or to beat you down or make you just feel like you're just like the slave to being a mom and a wife no 
a lot of the times men are doing things for our own protection. We just don't see it that way because we're so consumed in our emotions. So since you feel that you know best, go ahead and do it. And so she went out there and she figured out the hard way that, yeah, this is a lot. Me being a stay-at-home mom and having to do all of the work that my husband was doing or my, what my man was doing, damn, whoa, what did I sign up for? And you don't realize until it's too late that these men were actually looking out for you and doing you a favor. But because you were too consumed in your emotions, you called it toxic. Let's continue. Y'all like the video, some real talk, and share it as well. As a working mom, I'm literally still doing all of the same stay at home mom shit, just on a different schedule. But now with the added mental stress load of how do I pay every bill by myself? And that's not even the part that frustrates me. The kicker is that this is culturally normal and even embrace. That Hold on. She said the kicker is that this is culturally normal. Well, the reason why it's culturally normal is because culturally we find it normal to get with deadbeat men. That's first things first. That's one level and layer. Oh, again, I want the project man that I have to build and mold and shape. Right? Second level and layer is it's culturally acceptable for us to leave behind perfectly good situations all because we're in our feelings and we want to be strong, independent boss chicks. That's another reason why it is culturally normal and acceptable. Let's really analyze and peep the game. Let's really go there if we're going to go there. We don't realize that we are the ones that are creating the same environments, the same outcomes that we are complaining about. It's culturally normal and acceptable because y'all made it that way. And now y'all are having to feel the consequences behind said choices. And you can't handle it because the quality men that you should have been with in the first place don't want you. Or another level and layer is the quality men that really have seen your entire situation for what it is, they peep game on you and say, hold on now, but you had a man that was of quality, that was trying to provide for you and protect you and lead you and teach you and all of that, and you still left him. So what do I look like coming up behind him and you possibly doing the same thing to me? So you got both of those things at play. First things first, I'm not coming through to rescue you and your kids when you chose to deal with this low vibrational, low level individual. No, not doing that. That's too much of a headache and a hassle. Or it's like, hold on, man. If you left him and he did everything right, you just felt like he wasn't. Um, Who's to say that I'm protected? from having an experience in that same outcome if I choose to get with you. So that's why it's culturally acceptable and normal. Y'all made it that way. Due to y'all choices, y'all have made it this way. Let's continue. That if you're a single mom, you're just gonna struggle and that's it. Like I could be on the brink of a mental breakdown, literally underwater telling people like, I do not know how to make this better. And someone will ask me, what's wrong? Are you okay? No, I'm not. And the response is, well, you know, it's hard out here for everybody. And I get it. We all have our challenges. We're all going through our own struggles. But why is it culturally normal for this to be the only other option? Like at this point, I'm about to start dating other moms to see who wants the co-mother together because the fact that we're all just isolated but going through the same exact challenges at the same time just feels ridiculous hold on let's take that back water telling people like i do not know how to make this better and someone will ask me what's wrong are you okay no i'm not and the response is well 
you know it's hard out here for everybody and i get it we all have our challenges we're all going through our own struggles but why is it culturally normal for this to be the only other option like at this point i'm about to start dating other moms to see who wants to co-mother together because the fact that we're all just isolated but going through the same exact challenges at the same time just feels ridiculous She said that she is getting ready to start dating other single moms. That sounds real desperate. Look, we are living in a new day and age, baby, to where we have to suffer the consequences of our actions. We can't handle that. The reason why she is bringing up, hey, I'm going to be a single mom dating other single moms because I need some help. That is because there is a lack of men that are like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and save her. I'm going to go ahead and play step daddy. I'm going to go ahead and that ain't happening no more. Men have changed the entire game. Baby, hold on now. Again, y'all like the video, share the video and subscribe. Are y'all understanding what's happening right now? Mm, 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 mm. She says she's getting ready to start dating other single moms. And she's serious. Just look at her face. Seriously, look at her face, you all. She said, this is the face of, I am fed up. I am overwhelmed. I did not anticipate this. Nobody, no man is coming to help me. Right? Like, she's serious. And that is because a lot of guys of today have left these women with no option but to live with the consequences. If you wanted to be a strong, independent boss chick, well, this is what that looks like. This is what that feels like. This is what that is. If you want to get with the bottom of the barrel type of individuals and procreate with them, this is what that feels like. This is what that looks like. This is what that is. This is the reality that you have to deal with and face. And a lot of chicks just cannot handle it. It's too much. It's too much. But hopefully this will just inspire more young women out there to be careful about who they procreate with. Um, be careful about the lifestyles that they uh, choose to engage themselves or indulge themselves in. Because again, if you want to be left stuck, having to juggle everything on your own, that ain't going to be easy, baby. It's not going to be easy. So be careful. Be very careful. Because you do not want to be out here so desperate and lonely, looking for help and struggling that you're like, look, what are other, the other single mothers at? Now, here's the problem with even that, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's women out there like, oh, no, that's a, that's a good solution. You know, we're both single mothers. So how about we just come together as a team and we juggle everything as a, as a unit? The issue with that is she's going through the same exact situation as you, which means that she's not going to be able to help you in the ways that you need her to help you. If we're both in the same bucket, okay, how can I assist you when I'm here with you? You don't have nobody to watch your kids because you're at work. I'm at work too. This is why it's so important to establish roles. 
When a man is like, look, baby, you stay at home and you tend to the children. I'll go out here and I'll get to the money and I'll provide for everything. Like, that's why that is in motion like that. That's why that is set in, in place. Because that's balance. But it's, it's going to be an imbalance when y'all are both doing the same thing, looking for help in the other area. Like, no, I, I need you over here, but you're over here with me. So the whole single mom dating a single mom, that's not going to help either. That's not going to work either. That's why, again, it's just very important to find uh, men that will be able to handle that role and responsibility because they're more suited for it anyway. Okay. When it comes to women, we're just not built or designed to be out here working hard and, you know, trying to hustle like that. That's just too much. You know, our hustle needs to, if we hustle at all, it needs to be, you know, very minimal effort. You know what I'm saying? Like at our leisure, that's the kind of hustle that we need. But to be on go and go mode all the time, having to be the breadwinner, having to be the provider and the protector, having to be the leader and the teacher, that's way too much. Way too much, honey. And we don't realize that it's way too much until it's too late. Now I bet you respect the role that your husband or your man played. Now I bet you wish that you would have got with that guy over here that was productive, but because he wasn't exciting and he was boring. Yeah, I'm just going to go with the project mail. Well, this is what it is. And again, I hope that it inspires young ladies out there moving forward to not place themselves in these type of positions to where they are struggling, looking for help and desperate at it. Right. Very desperate at the attempt. I'm looking for help. Well, I'm going to start dating single moms. Again, you are her face. She's very serious. This is she's very serious. She may have said it tongue in cheek. But I would bet my last dollar that um, she would say something like that to see who would bite. Right? Uh, I'm going to just say it tongue in cheek. Like at this point, I'm getting ready to, you know, see if I can date another single mother. But really she like, uh, do y'all feel me? Is there any more single mothers out there? Because I need help now, sure. But yeah, it's that hard out here because again, men are checked out. They changed the game. They're not coming to rescue you. So choose wisely, be smart, and don't block your blessings as well. Let's end off with that. Don't block your blessings as well. She said that she was a stay-at-home mom. Which means that she had a situation and a dynamic to where she didn't have to go out there into the workforce and, and, and hustle. But for whatever reason, she was like, you know what the hell with this? I'm going to go out here and be in my own independent boss chick, real woman, and then it backfired. And like I said, I bet she understands and appreciates what her man did back then real heavily now but y'all let me know y'all thoughts y'all opinions y'all feedback in the comment section i look forward to seeing what you all have to say um but yeah guys we see we see that you all are real serious about not coming in cleaning up things that you did not create right and we're, we're having to feel that and hopefully ladies you know that as well and it prompts you to do better. But I love y'all. I respect y'all. I'll see y'all in the next dope discussion. I thank you all for pulling up with me. And y'all let me know how y'all feel, all right? Like the video, share the video, subscribe. And most importantly, make sure that you are hitting that notification bell. That way you can be alerted for future dope discussions. But until next time, much love and peace.